Almost everything in your professional career requires some sort of negotiation. There's your salary, location, lab space, job for a partner, colleagues, work climate, and much more. These are all things you're likely going to have to negotiate to get what you need to succeed. When you begin any negotiation process, it's important to first set your goals. If your long-term goal is tenure in a particular department, think about what you need to get there. We suggest creating a list separated into three categories, need, really want, and would be good to have. Think about how much each item you want means to you and prioritize them accordingly. Ask yourself what on the list is negotiable and what likely isn't. To know what you can realistically ask for, it's important to do some research. When you do this, keep in mind the ZOPA, or Zone of Possible Agreement. It's okay to ask for things outside of the ZOPA, but your bottom line shouldn't be outside of this zone. For example, you don't want the lowest salary you'll accept to be higher than any starting salary those hiring for the position can afford. You'll want to understand what type of resources the university or any other organization has before going into your negotiations. Gather tips and advice from colleagues who have been in similar situations. Try to understand what your peers were working with to get insights into the type of flexibility you might have in your negotiations. As you develop your must-haves in a negotiation, you will need to have a backup plan in case they cannot give you the items that you need. This backup plan is also known as a BATNA, or Best Alternative to a Negotiated Agreement. If your current negotiation reaches an impasse, you'll want to have your best outside option already identified. Focus on keeping the talks positive and productive. Unless you find evidence to the contrary, assume that the other party will do everything they need to help you succeed. You should always avoid issuing ultimatums unless you have a strong backup plan or BATNA. There are lots of factors that can influence how a negotiation can go, including biases that expect people to behave in certain ways. While over time we are working to change these biases, in the meantime, here are some strategies that senior women have found to work for them, such as aligning yourself with the organization's goals. It is always helpful to focus on mutual benefits. Emphasize how your work can contribute to the department's overall objectives. Use relationship language, such as, I've talked with several people who, or, so-and-so suggested that I talk with you. Be creative when you ask for things. Can you share or borrow expensive equipment? Make sure that they know what you're asking for and why. They may be able to help you with a creative solution. During the actual negotiation process, remember that communication skills make a big impression. Stick to a couple of main points that you want to make clear in a meeting or phone call, and avoid rambling on. Keep any written documents well organized and concise. Don't forget to include an executive summary. During in-person or even virtual meetings, speak clearly, make eye contact, avoid upspeak, don't touch your hair or face, and rehearse beforehand and try to eliminate distracting verbal tics like ahs, ums, and likes. In summary, here are the three key aspects you'll want to focus on in any negotiation. One, goals. Clearly define your goals and do your research ahead of time. Two, tactics. Use your full arsenal of tactics and adjust as needed. At the same time, recognize tactics that are being used on you and don't sell yourself short. Three, attitude. Don't take negotiations personally. Rehearse beforehand and focus on your communication skills. We hope these tips have been helpful and best of luck in your negotiations.